Bert, Bert, Bert Badger, Bert, 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 Bert Badger Nice to meet you! Bert, Hey little badgers, I'm Bert Badger and welcome to Nice to meet ya! If it's your first time joining us Nice to meet you! Today, we're at a military museum. What's a museum? That's easy. A museum is a place where we keep things to show people history. And we're at a military museum. We're gonna try and keep it light, but I'd like to show you about our nation's history and how to respect our vets. Let's check it out. And don't forget to stick around to the end of the episode where you get to see what's inside. My magic, magic, rip, rip, magic, rip, rip, magic, fanny, fanny pack. My magic, rip, rip, fanny pack. These guys are going to help us learn our nation's history. Hi, I'm Bert Badger. Hi, Bert. I'm Martin. Nice to meet you. Hi, Bert. I'm Jill. Hi, Jill. Nice to meet you. Let's check it out. <laughs> when you're in the military, you have to wear a uniform so you all look in sync. Let's hear some cool things about these uniforms. What about this one, Martin? Well, this is a Navy uniform that a sailor would wear. Ahoy. That's cool. Absolutely. And you can see he's got his ribbons on here, and this is a hat that he would wear in the Navy. Now, this right here, this scarf, you see in the back here, he would wear, this is a very traditional scarf. And they've worn these type of scarves for over 100 years. And this goes with the uniform. And it's a very thick uniform made out of wool. I wear a scarf when it's cold outside, so I get it. And this is a Marine Corps uniform. It's made out of a very dark blue material. It's also a very thick material. And you can see he's got uh, ribbons on here that symbolize his medals. And he's got a belt buckle here with an eagle globe and anchor. Stands for the world. The anchor stands for the Navy that he's part of. And also the eagle stands for America. And he's got buttons, very shiny buttons, that he's got to keep very shiny with an eagle on it also. If I saw somebody in that uniform in real life, I would think he looks Cool. Well, these are really cool uniforms. What a fun time that was. Let's check out some more cool stuff here at the Military Museum. Hey guys, this is the American flag. What colors do you see? Red. Bonus point! What other colors do you see? White. Bonus point! And what is another color that really stands out? Blue! Bonus points! That's right, our nation's colors are red, white, and blue, and they stand for freedom. How many stars do you see up here? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 48. Don't we have 50 states though? That's right, the stars represent the states. Well, this flag was made before Hawaii and Alaska became United States of America. And so they updated the flag with this one that has 50 stars. And every time a new state joins the nation, we add a star. But we'll never add any more stripes because the stripes represent the 13 original colonies of the United States of America. And that'll never change. That's where the colonists settled, and that's where they'll always be. Thank you to the vets. What's the flag mean? What's it mean? What's it mean? What's the flag mean? What's it mean? What's it mean? Red shows valor. White is innocence. Blue represents vigilance, justice, and perseverance. This is how we push ourselves to the world. To every little boy, man, woman, and girl. Thank you to the vets. Thank you to the pets. Thank you, military. You're always so honorary. Yeah. What's it mean? What's it mean? Thank you to the vets. 
Thank you so much. Can you see me? Am I camouflaged? Do you guys know what camouflage is? It means you blend into your surroundings. Now this and this are two different uniforms. Martin, what are the difference between these? Well, this uniform is a dress uniform. So a soldier would wear this when he wanted to go out and, you know, something special, maybe a party. That uniform right here with the camouflage would be something he would wear out when he was in the trees or out in the field, as we would say. Mm -hmm. So that's where he would do that. He would wear it because he didn't want the enemy to see him. Okay. And Jill, what is this? This is a, a jacket that my husband wore. Um, he was on the Arnold J. Isbell um, in the Navy in 1967. And this is something he wore, you know, around the, the ship. I would wear that around any ship I was on. That's a cool uniform. Thank you guys so much. Let's check out some more cool stuff. What's the difference between badges and medals? Good question. You can see right here, these, these are patches, okay? And then you have down here, these are all the badges and medals that we have down here. We have everything from uh, badges that symbolize you've done a great job, like this, these commendation medals over here. And then we have different medals over on this side that symbolize that they've been, uh, they've done a really great job in, in battles that they've fought in, like a silver star or a bronze star. This one really stands out to me because it's purple, and that's one of my favorite colors. What does this one mean? Well, this is a purple heart, and this is actually our nation's oldest medal. It was designed, uh, given out first during the Revolutionary War by George Washington. And uh, it was brought back in the 1920s, and that's why it has George Washington's face on it. And it's given to soldiers, Marines, airmen, and airmen, uh, and naval personnel when they're wounded in battle. Do you have any other medals that are more higher ranking around? Well, why don't you check your uh, magic fanny pack? What? Yes. <laughs> My magic fanny pack. My magic fanny pack. Okay. What? Whoa. What is this? Well, that's called the Distinguished Service Cross. And that's the second highest award for bravery that the Army can give to a soldier in, when they're in a combat or war. I don't think I'm fit to hold this. <laughs> That's awesome. And this type of an award was uh, first came about about a hundred years ago during World War One, and uh, it's it's a very important award. It's right under our Medal of Honor, so you don't see very many of these. So it's really important that it was in your fanny pack today. <laughs> well, I magically got there because Bert Badger is not as brave as you are, Martin. <laughs> Hey little badgers, I'm Bird Badger and we're going to do a learning today about the military. Did you know there's different branches of the military? Well, let's get into it and talk about it. Who do you think is in charge of our military? Is it a general? Is it a lieutenant? No, it's a civilian. It's the President of the United States. He's in charge of the army and he gets to ask Congress if we go to war or help him make decisions. Let's talk about the different branches of the military. There's a whole bunch of them, so let's get into it. One branch of the military is the army. The army is the biggest part of the military. They control and fight on land with troops, tanks, and artillery. Another branch of the military is the air force. That's right, they fly planes and jets, they transport troops, and help out in times of war. They used to be a part of the army until 1947, but broke away. Also, did you know that the Air Force controls all the satellites in space? That's crazy. Another branch of the military is the Navy. The Navy is at sea. The Army's on the ground, the Air Force is in the air, and the Navy is in the water. Did you know that the US Navy is the biggest Navy in the entire world? We control submarines, aircraft carriers, and big boats. Did you know the U.S. has 10 of the world's 20 biggest aircraft carriers? An aircraft carrier is so big that planes and jets can take off right off the top of them. Isn't that crazy? 
Also, nice to meet you did a really great episode on an aircraft carrier that should be coming out real soon. Another branch of the military are the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps are usually the first troops to go in to a battle and usually the last to leave the battle. They work really closely with the Navy in times of war. The Marines are so brave. Thank you guys so much. Another branch of the military is the Coast Guard. The Coast Guards are at sea just like the Navy, except a little bit smaller. But during times of war, the Coast Guard and Navy love to work together. The Coast Guard also keeps our coast safe. They'll rescue people at sea, and they work very closely with Homeland Security in case of a natural disaster. Thank you so much, Coast Guard. You guys are great. Another great part of our military are the reserves. These are people who give one weekend a month and two weeks a year to help train in case they're needed in times of war. And when we are in times of war, they will go from non-active to full active military duty. And we salute you guys and thank you so much for helping out our nation and keeping us safe. Well, that's today's learning on the military. And don't forget, if you ever see a veteran, make sure you go up to him, look him in the eye, shake their hand, and say thank you. Because they've literally dedicated their lives to helping protect our nation and keeping us safe. And I want to personally say thank you so much to you guys. All right, back to Burt Badger. No, I said extra sprinkles. No, extra. No, hold the frosting. No, I don't want... Just extra sprinkles, that's it. Bert Badger, I wanted to talk to you about this. Oh, okay, sorry, I was just talking to somebody on the first cell phone ever. Look at how big this sucker is. The antenna would hit most ceilings. I don't know how he would talk on it. You have to go outside. That's so silly. What is this? Well, this is actually what uh, soldiers would use out in the field. Uh, it's a telephone. No. Absolutely. This is a telephone. Well, that's a telephone today. But this is what they had many, many years ago. Wow. And you had a big battery right here. And you'd actually turn it on with that switch. Now, I noticed a lot of people are doing quite a few different things here in the military. Like this person's flying a helicopter. This one's driving a tank. And this guy's flying an airplane. Well, there are, there are hundreds of jobs in the military besides this. As you can see, these are just some of the jobs. They have people that use computers. There are people that are veterinarians. There's doctors. There's dentists. Uh, there's a military dentist? Yes, absolutely. I take care of teeth for soldiers and Marines and sailors. I love to go to the dentist. That's why I keep my teeth nice and healthy and clean and brush my teeth twice a day. <laughs> What are some other cool jobs in the military? Well, you know, Bert, they do have military barbers and, well, you do look like you need a haircut. <laughs> you are not incorrect. <laughs> this is a motorcycle from the 1940s. It was used in World War II. Motorcycles were used to deliver messages and letters from A to B because text messaging didn't exist back then. Jill, thank you so much. And how can people contribute to this beautiful military museum? Well, they can donate, you know, uniforms. And if they can help out with cash donations also. And um, yeah, we're very grateful for whatever they do to help us keep it going. Cool. And then a lot of young people see people in uniforms and maybe don't know what to do. How should you approach a veteran? I think you should go up and shake their hand and thank them for their service. Absolutely. Well, that's the end of the show, you guys. I hope you learned something. I had a great time. I'm Bert Badger, and it was nice to meet you. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Thank you guys so much for watching the show today. It means so much to us. If you liked it, give us a big thumbs up. If you want to subscribe and hang out even more, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be up to date on the latest and greatest, Burt Badger, nice to meet you. Hit that notification bell. And don't forget to tell all your buddies about how much fun you had today with the one, Mr. Burt Badger. <gasps> nice to meet you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Okay, go outside and play, do something productive. I'm a robot, I'm a robot, I'm a robot, I'm a robot, I'm a robot.